Welcome to Softcore History. What is up? Welcome back to Softcore History. I am your host for the week, Rob Fox. I'm joined, as always, by my co-hosts, Jake Goldman and Dan Regester. How are you doing today, boys? I'm doing great. I'm doing great, Rob. We're doing fine. Doing fine, We're just doing fine. just fine, baby. Fine, just fine. Uh, yeah, had a good weekend, man. I had a great... Uh, you didn't have the best weekend here. I didn't have the best that's weekend. For, not that's even. for the Patreon, Rob. Yeah. That's, <laughs> oh, okay. That's, 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 that's not free. That's, that's, a, that's my... You can hear all about Dan's great weekend on the Patreon. It's definitely paywall-worthy. And where do you find that, Dan? Patreon.com slash Softcore History. Yeah, we're not only doing a free episode, or not free, an extra episode a week for Patreon subscribers. Now we're going to be doing two. We just did a watch lawn for Apocalypto. Yep. God, I can't talk to you. We got a voicemail set up so you can call in. Call in with your questions. We'll answer them about history or I guess otherwise. So every week you'll get an additional episode that's a normal episode and then kind of like a interactive it's either interactive. yeah so either one week will be a voicemail episode and then the next week will be um we do historical movies or tv shows so like you said we just did apocalypto uh we'll probably you know we'll do stuff we did a band of brothers episode not long ago and we'll do stuff like that um what you know we did the patriot a while back so it'll just be like his historic history movies either good ones you know like Patton or something dope like that or terrible ones like pearl harbor you don't yes. have to explain it that yeah in depth. no it's fine just but, movies yeah, we'll watch movies. You can watch along with us, and it's a lot of fun. Um, you also get 20% off at the Softcore History store, uh, softcorehistory.com. 20% off as a Patreon member. Um, if that or codes, you can get merch full price. Or you can get merch full price and support us, but you can also just get it for cheaper if you support us in the way we most like you to. <laughs> the number one way to support this yeah. show is subscribing to the Patreon at patreon.com slash softcorehistory. Really, all our stuff is already priced pretty well, too. I mean, like we don't get much of a margin on the merch anyway. It's more for us to get our name out there in a different Be way. A and we try, for and we, us. Yeah, and we yeah. try to make cool shit and stuff you would actually want to wear. So if you ever have any ideas or things you'd like us to make, hit and us the up. store might get revamped soon. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see how lazy I am this week. Yeah, we'll see how. <laughs> that's a joint effort of laziness for us, too, just because I would have to do the theme. But, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. E- either way, there's shit to buy. So go go for it. Check it out. And the Patreon. And, by the way, if you, you know, can't, aff- can't you know, set aside the money for the Patreon or whatever, that's fine, too. You can still support this show um, by liking, giving us a five-star review um, on uh, Apple Podcasts mm-hmm. or uh, Spotify. Spotify. F- and Spotify, you just leave five stars. Apple, you need to write, write the review. Write a review. Great. That's super, super helpful. Make them funny. We'll read them off uh, yeah. next episode. Yeah, we're behind the f- on The there, funniest though. ones from this week. We'll read next episode. Yeah, we yeah. And we super appreciate it. Put moves us up the charts. People find us organically. Stuff like that. That's enough house cleaning. It Fuck is. This. It is. But speaking of finding us organically, I did an episode this week. Um, you know, just to take advantage of SEO, take advantage of what people are looking for. That's what I did last week with St. Patrick. That's what I did this week with the Irish. <laughs> St. Patrick's Day is the seventeenth. Hasn't been St. Patrick's Day yet. Right. So we're doing another episode on the Irish. This we're getting week. ahead. This is like at Grand X when uh, Clint came in. He made us all write SEO articles for things that would happen eight months in advance. Which is pretty industry standard. I hated it. Yeah, it's awful. <laughs> it's fucking terrible. It's not fun. It's like, why am you I really You should be showing the- up on St. Patrick's Day being like, oh, fuck, it's St. Patrick's Day. I'll write, I'll write an article about St. Best Patrick's. spring break destinations, July 15th. Yeah. Like, what, dude? This... This isn't relevant. Yeah, no. like you need to write the spring break article now, so it's ready. But I mean, that's normal. I mean, pe- they write obituaries clicks. years in advance. They do. They do. But yeah, I've I mean, already written mine. Yeah, how's it go? He was a real one. <laughs> that's it. That's debatable. Right, but yeah, but I mean, like even it's it's three words, four words, and it's you know. It's, well, no, it's he was a real one? Question mark. Oh yeah. Then yeah. That's, oh. The mystery. Yeah. It never ends. Um, that's, I'm more into that, 100%. You know what would be a fun game? Is guessing which young celebrities already have their obituary written. Because obviously, like in the last... Anyone that's 27? Yeah, any, yeah once you're 26, 26, they're like, all right, start yeah. writing it. But like Demi Lovato has to have an obit written. Why, you think? Just because troubles? or Drugs, all that stuff, you know what I mean? But like... Pro- maybe even like Pete Davidson because he's just got a weird life. But like obviously, you know, like someone like Jason Bateman, that obituary is not written. No, he's crushing it. He's a, he's only in the middle of his life. Like he's pretty straight. He's so literally sober. 
Dude, that's like the other cult in LA. It's either Scientology or sobriety. Uh, I just saw a stand up do a bit on this. Uh, I forget which stand up it was, but I saw it on Instagram. And he was just like, if you know how to drink and you move to Los Angeles, they want to send you to rehab immediately. Really? Yeah. He's like, if you know how to drink. Like, if he's like, they're like, oh, what? how many beers did you have? He's like, I don't know. Like, you're, you're just from Chicago. Yeah. And you drink like someone from Chicago. You move to L.A. and they think you're like, have a fucking problem. Yeah. Then there's L.A. sober. It's like, I'm sober except for pot, LSD, mushrooms, DMT, ketamine. It's like, wait, you're not sober. Yeah, it's not. Those are all mind-altering substances. So basically what you're saying is you still want to get fucked up, but maybe you were just an awful drunk. That's, oh, isn't that all? Of it. Yep. Isn't that all of it? I think quite a bit of AA is more just people that are bad. It's actually bad a religious drugs. cult. Well, I mean, yeah, which we were talking about. They have you yeah. accept our Lord and Savior. No, a higher power. The 12 step program. It's a higher power. You fill in the blank. Yeah. Not Allah. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Except him. <laughs> Moses, don't care. Fine. Maybe. We'll, we'll see. take it. We'll take it. Friends of Bill. <laughs> if you ever see that on like any sort of meeting log, it's an AA meeting. I'm sure. Yeah. Zenu or whatever, the Scientology guy. Well, Zenu, He's I don't the think. devil. Yeah, Zenu's the bad guy. In Scientology? Yes, yeah. Zenu is the bad guy. You, so you can't accept him as no I don't think power. I don't think AA and Scientology are even compatible, man. Scientology are, like gets a lot of people sober, too. They, yeah, do, they basically use the that. Same, okay, really. well. Scientology is we actually proven to be better than AA. If you want to talk about Narconon. Their uh, rehab facilities, they brainwash people with Dianetics to get them sober. They get sober. I didn't say I agree with how they did it. I'm just saying a lot of people go there to get sober. Yeah. yeah. And then they get, I don't even agree with getting sober. This Yeti is full of tequila. Jake, we're results-based. Drill a hole in your head. Yeah. That's how you should do it. Listen, Listen to, to Patreon. Patreon. Yeah. Or that. Anyway, we're here to talk about the Irish. Not drilling a hole in your head. What is there to speak of? When it comes to the Irish that we haven't already talked about. Well, we haven't touched on this at all, actually. You'll probably learn a lot today. When people think of Irish immigrants. And it's just because you saw Banshees of Inish here. It's, that's, it's, that's really seen, why I'm rooting for it time. tonight in the Oscars. Because <laughs> you can say you watched it. I, I saw Banshees of Inish and I'm a huge fan. Dude, have you even seen? I really like watching that movie. <sighs> I was with an Irishman last night. Not a fan. <laughs> For reasons that you can find out on the Patreon. Yeah. No, he didn't even say on the Patreon. That was off mic. Oh, yeah, that's right. But let's just say Dan was envious of him. Yeah. Dan, you could say Dan was green with envy. Because <laughs> of Irish things. Yeah. Yeah. A specific kind of envy. Yeah. If you will. Is that a potato in your pocket? You happy to see me? <laughs> hey, you packing a yam down there? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, watching the Banshees of Inish and I was like, man, like 21-year-old Rob taking film classes in college would have been such a fucking erection about this movie. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? Like, oh, so good, the writing. Look at all the talking. Look at all the great Just dialogue. Fucking, I want to jump back in time and kick the shit out of myself. But I did like it a lot. I watched it on my birthday. Here's what my birthday was. It was Courtney leaving me alone so I could watch Banshees of Inish and yeah, get did, drunk. Yeah. Didn't you make breakfast for everyone on your birthday? I made breakfast for everyone, yeah. No, I made dinner. Oh, okay. I made I, dinner for I everyone. I didn't get dinner. What? Yeah, I didn't get oh, dinner either. Well, we didn't get dinner. On actually, my birthday? Yeah. Yeah, you weren't invited. Actually, Rob cooked for me this weekend. Someone yeah. was too busy with their prior engagement to hang out with us. Mm-hmm. But... It was a commitment, all right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, when people think of Irish immigrants, they typically think of the gangs in, you know, gangs in New York, Irish guys coming into the Northeast and spread out from there. Uh, most of them staying in, you know, New York, Boston, so on, so forth. Um, no one thinks about an Irishman being in, you know, Georgia or, for example, New Orleans. Ooh. No, just Italians. In New Orleans? Yeah. We'll get to that. That don't make an appearance. Not welcome. <laughs> don't make an appearance. Uh, the truth, however, is that over the course of the 19th century, hundreds of thousands of Irish uh, immigrants came to the American South and to New Orleans in particular. In fact, New Orleans was the second largest port of entry for the Irish, only to New York. I imagine there's a smaller number, too, that went through, like, Savannah. Savannah was uh, also a huge one. Essentially, they were sent to Savannah when New Orleans was like, we don't want any more. There's too many. Yeah, because yeah. Savannah has a huge St. Patrick's huge. Day. And that's why. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. The, Savannah was a, 
back uh, maybe it still is i don't know but back in the day it was a huge port as well yeah no i mean that's where my family came in was savannah have you been i have actually never been to savannah i would love to go to savannah Georgia. it's a good time for yeah Saturdays. good garden districts like lots of it's supposed to be a pretty place block party. yeah i'd move i would move to savannah georgia how far is it from atlanta not that far um i just want to go to braves games every once in a while. i used to always go there on the way back to philly between uh when i was at ucf yeah because i had a friend that went to scad a great art school. Great art school. Like a legitimately fantastic art school. Mm-hmm. Savannah's like, it's like the Charleston that no one goes to. Yeah. You know what I mean? At, yeah. Like, And it's got the same sort of New Orleans, Charleston, like awesome antebellum architecture. Yeah, it's like 250 miles from Atlanta. It's not far at all. Yeah. Okay. It's like probably two. But you hit it on hours. 95, so it's, I mean, you had, to get to Atlanta, you got to go out of your way. You got to go to 75. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to cross. Yeah. But Whatever. We're not, we're not here to talk about traffic. No, let's talk about roads. Um, Interstates. Yeah. Dwight Eisenhower, thank you. Thanks, Dwight. So the 1830s in particular saw a huge wave of Irish immigration to New Orleans. This was thanks to the potato famine. What? Yeah, you might say, wait, Rob, what? The potato famine was in the 1840s, you fucking idiot. Oh, I would have thought that. I would have just went with it. I don't don't know when the potato famine was. I have no idea when the potato famine was. Okay. So, yeah, uh, some other person who's smarter than uh, you two might have been like, wait a minute, Rob, the potato famine was in the 1840s. You're a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, Rob. Well, idiot. that potato famine was in the 1840s. There were other potato famines. Before Lesser or known after? potato famines. Before. Oh, right. Probably after as well. Basically, potatoes were constantly realizing that they lived in Ireland and then killing themselves. Yeah, it happens. Right. Especially when you only have one crop. And you know what? Then. People don't really like reboots. Retreads, yeah, not good. The sequel. This was more of the MCU, the Potato and, Cinematic Universe. And guess yeah, what? The Rob? Potato Famine Cinematic. Universe. <laughs> yeah. Guess what? The MCU is starting to fall off. It is. It yeah. is. We need Jonathan Majors to save it in a big way. Uh, there were also potato famines in Ireland in 1820, 1821, 1822. That, that's just a continued famine. Yeah, just that's con- one famine. Kind of group those together. Yeah. Okay. 1830. Was there like a 30-day period where it got better? So they're like, all right, start start the new one. Potatoes, like not famine. Harvest. The new harvest. No, these crops are... There was another one in 1830. Uh, then there was another one in 1831. And then another one in 1832. Those are two famines. There was think. also one in 1833. That's still two famines. Uh, and then another in 1834. That's one... <laughs> yes. It's like at, you're at a work site and it's like zero days since last incident. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's never a day in that period where they had potatoes. <laughs> then they got lucky and uh, didn't have another one until 1836. Uh, so they're 1835. They were good. Yeah, they were yeah. flush on potatoes. They had it. <laughs> 35 was the year they for potatoes it. in oh, Ireland. It's they looking were looking up from here, boys. <laughs> <laughs> we're sitting on mountains of potatoes. That's like the seven. Uh, it's not unusuals in a row on the jukebox. And then yeah. you put the one. Uh, What's new, Pussycat? On it's like, oh, yeah. it's over. And then it goes back, the the classic Mulaney bit. Yeah. Yeah, you get one year of one year. potatoes. Yeah. Uh, 1836, though, came back, uh, stuck around in 1837. 1838, good year for potatoes. But 1839, not so much. So the entire 30s were pretty much shit. They didn't – it just sounds like potatoes don't work in that country. Yeah. They, it, maybe that's, um, you know, by design, too. There might be a reason. For yeah, that. There's, a, there's definitely a reason. <laughs> yeah. They were kind of limited by outside pressure to have only one crop. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Just a Perhaps bit. a neighbor. One that's still mean. <laughs> still pretty mean to them. Yeah. Like, looks down on them for no reason. Well, mm. uh, well, they look down on everyone. We're, a, we're an absurd people. <laughs> we? Oh, the Irish? Yeah. yeah. I thought you were talking about Brits for a second. I was like, we're mm. just little, uh, we're little hill people. Yeah. And your red what devil you, faces. Like, think about the mud fuckers that, they, that the British found. That's how they thought about everyone, though, I guess, too. Uh, everyone well, else no, they thought the French were better. Yeah, but oh, were they? incredibly superstitious. Most yeah, people Yeah, the whole Halloween were. situation. Was that Patreon or Maine? Patreon. Where uh, Halloween is an Irish holiday. It is. And you're stealing our culture our by celebrating Halloween. Yeah, okay. Our culture is literally your costume. Yeah. <laughs> All costumes are a culture are costume. Yeah. yeah. Every costume is an Irish one. Man. Don't forget to, uh, I mean, this is a perfect time to put out the SEO now. That's March for October. 
Yeah, it's time to start writing the October episodes. Write well, the I October mean, episodes. Don't forget to carve your turnips. That's right. Carve those turnips. We were too lazy to take turnips to that Halloween party we went to. Veronica's? Yeah. <laughs> leave them on the porch? Yeah. I, don't, I, I don't even know what turnips look like. I mean, you just go to H-E-B. They <laughs> got a turnip section. They got That's turnips. Fine. I don't know how you carve one, though. That's got to be hard. Yeah, it's a little surgical. There's, n- there's not, like, a empty cavity in the turnip that you get to. Maybe you uh, cut out the back. I mean, yeah, you just cut out the back and then just scoop it all out. And then put the back back on. It's all just like starchy though. It's not star- it, I feel like it's kind of like a potato. It probably is. Yeah, but they were tired of eating turnips. They wanted. They wanted that good shit. Yeah, right. That good, good. Just root people. They are. Yeah, we <laughs> eat roots. <laughs> yeah, you root people. We, I, the, we deserved what we got. Yeah, they but just find us, they just like they just roll up on Ireland and this muddy guys like gnawing on a tree root. <laughs> They're like name a culture that's better at storytelling than the Irish. No one. Sea shanties. Are we? It's all just like sad, meandering stories. Right, but we're good at bullshitting. We are good at bullshitting. They invented the TikTok dance. Riverdance made for TikTok. That is actually extremely made for TikTok. Yeah. It's all one frame. How many friends did you have? Not friends necessarily, but like how many girls in your school did Irish dance? Fucking zero, dude. Seriously? Uh, You were in Catholic school. Well, Katie had a friend that did it. Okay. But... Yeah, zero for me. Man. That I knew of. Maybe there were some out there doing it. Yeah, in o- Ocala? Yeah. They might actually hunt the Irish in Ocala still. No, there's plenty of Irish people in Ocala. Mm. I don't know, plenty. Yeah, who, someone had to tend the stables. Yeah. There's a lot of horses, so. Yeah. A lot of mud to move Eat around. shit shovelers. Yeah. Which we'll get into. That's what the Irish were made to do. Poop smithing. Um, so, the Irish loved potatoes, but potatoes didn't love the Irish. And many of them had to immigrate because of that. Uh, a lot they were also escaping. Europe was in a general economic depression at the time. Um, Ireland included because of the end of the Napoleonic Wars. Uh, many of these immigrants <laughs> were <laughs> that showed up in New Orleans were essentially lied to. Uh, by the shipping companies, and they were like, uh, yeah, yeah, your family's in, in, you know, Philadelphia or New York, but uh, we're taking New Orleans. It's right next door. It's all in America. Yeah, they're like, it's right next door. They, these people had, like, no idea how big America was, I guess. Oh, no. I mean, that's still common with people that come over here. They're like, oh, yeah, like, I want to see the Grand Canyon and the Liberty Bell and stuff. <laughs> I'm here for, like, a long weekend. It's like, dude, are yeah. you fucking serious? Oh, yeah, it's cool. I want to go to Barcelona and Moscow. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's that. It's like no, 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 no. Yeah, you're not gonna. Just, oh, and you're gonna hit Disney World on the way to the Liberty Bell. Yeah, have fun. That's all. That yeah, those two things are in the east, right? You're so gonna drive it. You're yeah. gonna drive it. All right, have fun. Yeah, have a good weekend. Yeah. Um. But yeah, many of these immigrants were just lied to and showed up in you know, New Orleans. A lot of them did want to go to New Orleans as well, though. Once the Irish got to New Orleans, finding work not easy. What are you talking about? There's a Pat O's right there. I know, right? It looks like just go there. Everyone dude. just work at the Pat O's. Yeah, come on. It's in the name. Like I might eat a drink. It's called the Hurricane. Oh, what are you putting it? I just dump, just dump liquor into it. It's e- fine. Everything. Yeah. This is this is a land full of criminals. Yeah, you I soak l- red potatoes in it <laughs> till it turns blood colored. I can't do. Accents. I fucking the first time in New Orleans was the uh, the Bud Light. Reps took me out to Pat O'Brien's the night before Mardi Gras, and they bought me a hurricane. We'd already been drinking a bunch, and they bought me a hurricane, and I took, like, I don't know, four sips of it. You, you know when you dr- start drinking something and you can f- eat, feel each sip immediately making you drunker? Yeah. That's every drink in New like, Orleans, but the hurricane yeah. in particular. Do, I mean, hurricanes are so much worse than even, like, a hand grenade. Oh, yeah, for sure. Hand grenades you can actually drink quite a bit of. Yeah, hand grenades are pretty doled out. Yeah. It's just you'll... You honestly, you might get diabetes before you get drunk. Because <laughs> your teeth are going to rot out before yeah, you get drunk. Lord. Yeah. It's so. I think New Orleans, too, is just it has the capability to make you more tolerant to alcohol just being there. Like, I feel like I can drink way more in New Orleans. Yeah. Because you can walk. Your with body's it. like yeah. up to the task. Yeah, you, know you have mean? to walk everywhere, too. So you're like, ah, eh, you're kind of working the bees off a little bit. I, you get it. I, you, you know, uh, there's a lot of trips I'll go on, drinking trips, where I'll come back kind of like bloated and feeling gross it's new orleans is never one of them i mean i feel gross but i'm never like bloated or holding like because like, you do walk fucking everywhere yeah it's nice it's nice sometimes you wake up in a pile of crystal burgers but you walked to that crystal and you walked home 
So it's okay. I don't think I've ever seen my wife more disgusted than eating at the Bourbon Street <laughs> Crystal Burger. Dude, that thing's a godsend. Uh, that and the Popeyes over there. That Popeyes is ratchet. <laughs> You, if you want to get murdered over fried chicken, that's a good place to do it. If I, like even for a Popeyes, yeah, it's that's rough. the Popeyesest Popeyes that ever Popeyes. I imagine someone got decked in the face the first time they asked for that chicken sandwich. <laughs> like fuck you, dude. Bone and only motherfucker. Yeah, it's like everyone's getting a three. Fast. Yeah, everyone's getting a three piece. By the way, Louis- Louisiana fast is New York three months. <laughs> Louisiana fast is an oxymoron. Yeah. I don't know if they understand that. They get it. It's like, yeah, that hard rock. Actually, that's the warning. That's the whole thing with Popeyes. Like, you know you're never going to get your order right. They're going to treat you like shit. It's the kind of the appeal to it. It's the experience. I never realized that until now. The Popeyes slogan warns you how the service is going to be. It's Louisiana fast. Yeah, it's Louisiana fast. It's like Central Florida 7. (laughs) Like, what are you? What is that? Right. A Central Florida 7? Yeah, so you, that's I mean that's like a Philly ten. It was like, it, oh, I guess. <laughs> no, Allentown it, seven. Here's what it is. It's like a let's say there's like a cheesesteak chain that go, sweeps the nation, and then their slogan is Philadelphia polite. <laughs> City of brotherly love. Yeah, brothers fight. Yeah, they fight a lot. Brothers will punch each other in the face for no reason. Brothers kill. Brothers kill. <laughs> Cain and Abel, brother of love. Yeah. Or is it you were at like Baltimore where it was just basically like, hey, we're putting the shit out on the tray, and if you don't take it, someone else does, that's fine. It was at the University of Maryland. Yeah. They were just like, they called my name for the pizza. I walked for 10 seconds from my table to the window to get the pizza. It was already gone. Yeah. And they told me it was my fault. They told you, put the word out, we're back up. <laughs> Maryland service. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Maryland is, the, those people are the fucking worst. Something just happened in College Station. Oh, their mayor, mayor got busted for being a pedophile. Like, literally, like, had child porn on his computer. And I was just like, that, co- like, once again, College Station is the worst play. Or, not College, College Station sucks. College Park. College, College Park. Park fucking sucks. Sick. Yeah. Um, God damn it. Yeah, so, Philadelphia Polite is Louisiana fast. That's what we... Yes. Came to that. We got there. Uh, you landed the plane. Yeah. Many of these people, many of the Irish show up to New Orleans, they're more rural, farmer-type people, whatever. Um, there were city folk, too, but a lot of rural. But they were all forced to stay in the city. Uh, they couldn't really go out into the country to find work. Huh. Why do you think that is? What year is it? The 1830s. Huh. <laughs> Gotta imagine all the land's kind of being worked by people. <laughs> yeah. People that don't require pay. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yep. They really couldn't work on farms or anything because those jobs were taken. Yeah. By the taken. By the taken. <laughs> the employees were taken, too. Right. So yeah. Yeah. Um, so the Irish had to settle for urban, menial, unskilled labor, you know, jobs in the city, uh, digging ditches, what, whatever the fuck. Street sweepers. Street sweep, all kinds of shit like that. And... What that meant was, is that these immigrants took her jibs. They took them from goddamn Native American people, okay? People born in America. <laughs> was this a real problem? Yeah, specifically they took jobs from Native Americans. Native Americans were doing all those jobs. Oh, really? Like Indians were oh, doing those God. jobs. Oh, God, okay. So the Irish came over and stole the jobs from the Indians because they would work for less than the Native Americans. They were short-selling themselves to uh, price were, out the Native they Americans? Were undercut, they were pricing out the Native Americans. They were undercutting the Native Americans. Jeez. Who's, who were already as destitute, I imagine, as you could possibly be. Yeah. No joke. I mean, God. that's It's kind of crazy to think about that. Like, if Irish people didn't come over here, would we see, like, a lot? I don't know. Like, would there be a lot more Native Americans? Also, kind of connecting dots here, did we also sabotage the Native American population by making them alcoholics like the Irish? Well, again, the Irish, it's like like the L.A. joke I just talked about, right? Yeah. People in L.A. can't drink. Yeah. Native Americans apparently couldn't handle their liquid very well. But you're going out to the bars. You got the Irish, Native Americans all at the same place. 
and they're just drinking you under the table. Yeah. And you develop a, a glaring problem. Yeah, I'm sure the Irish weren't drinking before they got to the U.S. No, I'm saying the Irish could handle it. And oh, they, yeah. yeah, they, yeah. They, oh, they, got they you, got you. Yeah, yeah. The natives alcoholism. couldn't keep up. Oh, I'm sure that maybe. Do you think the Irish did it on accident? They led by example? No, they were trying to eliminate competition. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're smart. We just have a, why don't you, you know what? I'm sorry for taking your ditch chicken job. Why don't you come down to the pub? Have a pint of whiskey with me. A pint of whiskey. Yeah. yeah. And we'll I all have a pint. <laughs> we'll all settle it out. Yeah. Irish pint's a lot different than a normal pint. <laughs> Irish pint has no bottom. And you fill it to the fucking rim. Yeah. To the rim. <laughs> to the rim, or you're a dick. Yeah. You know how you rim a margarita with salt? Yeah. You rim, you rim a pint of whiskey with just whiskey that spills over the side. Yeah, it's a nice drip effect. Yeah. yeah. That's what. That's how you rim that. Yeah. Speaking of which, in the Banshees of Inishirin, actually, is a great scene. Um, really well shot, I thought. Uh, just kidding. Sorry, that joke didn't land. Just trying to gas up Banshees of Inishirin. Oh. Uh, Do you, are you getting like a kickback for them? Or yeah. No. Like, Did they, you work a deal out with them that you didn't tell us about? It's just me and Martin McDonough. Yeah. Just, you're getting Mark McDonough's just like, hey, I heard your podcast is. Uh, Here's a couple grand. Yeah, yeah. Like, I wish, I wish <laughs> their Oscar campaign had been on our <laughs> podcast, guys. You gotta check it out, right? Um, so finally, Irish immigrants, you know, they're looking for work, trying doing these shitty jobs. Finally, though, they got a big job that thousands of them could do. It's building the dam. Close. Uh, digging the New Basin Canal. Okay. From 1831 to 1838. When I say digging it, I mean they dug this canal by hand. Ugh. No tools. <laughs> it's just clotted out. Yeah. yeah. Like, even though we had been making axes for 1.2 million years, they were like... Don't waste it on the Irish. Yeah, don't waste yeah, it on yeah. the Irish. They got hands. Their hands are like clubs. Yeah. Irish hands are basically tools. Yeah. Just let them go. But yeah, so they had to you just shovels and pickaxes. They dug this whole ass canal, just with just with back wrecking labor. The canal was uh, meant to connect Link, Lake Pontchartrain uh, through the swamp to the city, mm-hmm. um, which is a place that you could bring goods up or whatever, or something like that. Uh, the problem is, when you're working in a swamp, things get pretty diseasy. Yeah, the humidity and bugs don't really help. Not ideal. In this yeah. particular instance, we're talking about yellow fever and cholera. Yeah, I was going to say cholera is definitely one of the big ones. Yeah. Uh, so let me guess, Rob. The rest of the population blamed the Irish for these diseases. No. Nope. No, they knew the diseases existed. They were just happy to let the Irish get them. Mm. So the people funding the canal were like, <coughs> huh, who do we use to dig this canal with backbreaking labor by hand? We've got all these slaves. Problem is, even though we don't pay slaves, they're obviously, valuable. yeah, they're valuable. They're that's, pretty expensive. It's like you don't want to send your tractor into like dig up the rock farm, you right? Know? Like you don't right. want to break your your assets. So they're like, who is less right. valuable than slaves? Irish. The Irish. Yeah. We don't care how many of them die. No one owns them. No one pays them. They are literally worthless. Yeah, we can throw bodies at this thing. Yep. Yeah. And throw bodies they did. About 8,000 Irish people died digging this canal. Damn. A lot so, of bones in the canal, probably. Uh, Well, actually, uh, the bones were thrown into a mass grave without a grave marker uh, in the levee and roadway filled beside the canal that is now the Ponch Train Expressway and West End Boulevard. New Orleans is the most haunted place in the United States. <laughs> it's not it's even not, close. It's so haunted. Like, if there is a haunted, um, there is no more haunted place in the U.S. than that. Like, between the fucking, this thing, the, the lotteries, the what? The voodoo. The voodoo, yeah, all the French Creole, Haitian. All the con- tiny heads. Yeah. All their above ground cemeteries. Yeah, the, the, the bodies just chilling in the daylight. Right. It is the creepiest, most haunted place in the world. But it's also it, sick. It's I the love best. It so much. I, it's the most fun. It's the only town in America left with a soul. Yeah. Yeah, like you can really see the history. I'd say like there are a couple places that are close, like Charleston, Savannah. But that's because so many people have to die there. Yeah. For sure. For I them mean, to have a soul. Absolutely. It's a it's one just warped, twisted, collective ball of souls. That's one of the few cities in the country that I would move to tomorrow if I like won the lottery. Or Easily. Something. New Orleans? I would live in New Orleans. Without New question. Orleans is easy. I would say I would have to be rich to live yes. there. Yes, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cuz I I'm, I'm not trying to work in New Orleans. You don't want to live above a cafe? No. Let's say this podcast goes fully independent. 
we moved. We all, we're all making a comfortable living. Honestly, I probably wouldn't move to New Orleans. I'd have a house there or something or like a, a cool like spot in the French yeah, Quarter. Yeah, vacation to visit. home in the French Quarter. Yeah, but. We're killing it. That yeah. would actually be sick. Yeah, I don't want to live there. To live I, like in. Man, I want, I want that world you're living in. Yeah, this is all hypothetical. I know. Yeah. But I, I like that you believe in us. I do. I would go Garden District, personally. Actually, yeah, off magazine or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. that'd be nice. If you've never been to New Orleans, this means nothing to you, but you that's should go. Your, that's your fucking that's, fault. That you is your fault. You should go to New Orleans. If you, have, if you live. listen to this podcast, you probably like history. And if you like history, you will fucking love New Orleans. <laughs> if you listen to this podcast, you probably like to party. And if yeah, you like bro, partying, yeah. that's also a great spot. I'm probably it. just going to buy like the Undertaker shed in the giant cemetery that's there. He isn't. Oh, just <laughs> like take the guy's job. Yeah. Be the Undertaker? Not the Undertaker. Not the a wrestler. Undertaker. Yeah, an Undertaker. It's a yes. lowercase u. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. rude. Well, Dan is a lowercase u. It's fine. Okay. I don't care about that. Uh, but yeah, they're <laughs> the, the bones of unnamed Irish litter the Pontchartrain Expressway. It's like, okay, unnamed. It's a bunch of Pats, Pats and Mikes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we know what they're named. Yeah. Pat O'Brien's is actually the name of everyone who died. In that trash. Yes. 8,000 Pat O'Brien's That's died. what the bar's named after. What? Pat O'Brien's named after all the people that died in there. Probably. Yeah. It wouldn't shock me. Uh, the Irish still like New Orleans better than the rest of the southern cities, though, because it was Catholic. No surprise there. Obviously, French and Spanish Catholic, uh, more so than Irish Catholic. The Catholic Church, the big one in the French Quarter, is fucking sweet. St. Louis Cathedral. Yeah, it is. Yep. So cool. Yeah. That is one of the best cathedrals in the United States, for sure. I would say St. Louis Cathedral, um, St. Patrick's Cathedral in New, in New York, and honestly, you guys are going to roll your eyes. St. Well, Louis. you already said St. Louis, so I already rolled my eyes. It's named the St. Louis Cathedral. It's in New Orleans. I'm just saying. There is a saint, St. Louis, Louis the Ninth. You just ride so hard for your goddamn city. So That's, do you. Yeah. I never ride for Philly. You bird fucker. <laughs> I never ride for Philly. Oh, my God. Uh, dude, the Cathedral Basilica in St. Louis is insane. It is. It has the largest uh, mosaic in the Western Hemisphere. Whoa! I'll have to check the that entire out. ceiling is a is a mosaic. I don't know if I'll ever be back there, but if, if right. I do, I'll probably skip it. Yeah, you probably. Oh, you should probably just stay in my basement again. Yeah, you just sleep, watch NASCAR all morning. Yeah. Well, you, no, you're watching NFL. I thought. It was, uh, the, it was the Chiefs' first. Doesn't game matter. Yeah, yeah, this is pointless. It was. Look, the important thing. We just need to talk about my bachelor party. Uh. So, yeah, um, the Irish were not – or I'm sorry. And the Irish were able to come in droves um, to New Orleans for one simple reason. Um, they helped balance out ships. They were, like – they were essentially human ballasts? Yep. That's insane. Yep. They were able to come because it was so cheap because uh, essentially, like, all the cotton boats would come over to, you know, those ports – and drop off their stuff, and they needed ballast to be able to get back. So they sold tickets for a buck fifty. So the Irish w- just sat where the cotton was. Well, this was not a boat for humans. Yeah, it's just a cargo ship. Yep, it was a cargo ship. So they just came over on cargo ships. It's sh- like voluntary human trafficking. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Weird. Believe it or not, a ton of Irish people died on these crosses. No way. In the cargo holes? Right. Yeah. <laughs> that They just threw cotton in on one end. Uh, a lot of kids, of course, always children. It's always yeah. children first. For sure. They do that now with planes. They just stuff the Irish down with your, your bags. Yeah. They do. Yeah. It's That's like, why you guys are able to fly for so it's cheap. It's like 20 Irish, a couple German shepherds. Yeah. If there's even the slightest hint of smoke, you're all dead. Isn't it fucking insane that people used to just put their dogs in the cargo hold? They still do. What? Yeah, that's I mean, still- they still do. The, Who does that? That's where do you think the there are dogs that go in crates that go in the bottom of the plane? I think most people buy another seat. A lot of people buy another seat, but I think that still happens quite a bit. No, I don't think anyone's checking their dogs I anymore. I don't think people do that anymore. That That's literally happens. How they die. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I think that used to be a thing, and people just kind of were like, you know what? Maybe that, we should treat our be- our uh, pets better. Yeah, the yeah. thing I allegedly love, I should probably not torture in the worst way possible. Yeah, um, if your pet does not fit a carrier under the seat in front of you, your pet can travel in cargo. That's literally how it's still done. Those are people that don't matter, Jake. That is literally insane if someone still puts their pet in the cargo hold. 
yeah, no, it's like, well, most animals flown in the cargo area of airplanes are fine. It's literally still like, yeah, you still have to do that. I'm, it's fucking cruel. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. A, this is not a fun aside. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we keep. It going. still happens though. It's very. Uh, yeah, the Irish were not totally destitute. However, quite a few were middle class or better. Uh, in fact, the uh, 1830s group of Irish uh, who came over after 20 potato famines in a row um, were uh, the second wave of Irish. Okay. Uh, after a 1798 uprising in Ireland failed uh, to end British rule as. You know, most Irish uprisings tended to end in failure. Uh, many Irish left rather than face continued persecution. Louisiana's second governor under Spanish rule was actually, uh, I assume his name was Alexander O'Reilly, but a lot of them, uh, what's the opposite of anglicized? Spanish-sized? Yeah. <laughs> they Spanish-sized their name. It was under, because this was under Spanish rule at the time. Uh, Spanish-sized their name. Uh, so Alejandro O'Reilly. Latinized. Yeah, It'd probably be Latinized. Yeah, yeah. Uh, an Irishman by birth, uh, enlisted in the Spanish army so he could serve a Catholic monarch. Oh, okay, okay. Same team. Same, same team. team. Yeah. Same team. Uh, there's like a oh man. There's like an old wives' tale, or just like a. It's not really historically accurate, I think. But the thing they would say is that the if you're Black Irish, yeah, it's because you're descended from um, Spaniards that came over, right? Yeah, it was the Armada couldn't retreat back the way they came so they went up and around and a lot of them just landed in ireland because they knew it was catholic yeah and it's you know stayed and had sex with chicks Is that you portuguese irish dude maybe you are yeah maybe portuguese you do... jewish irish how's it feel to have be descended from someone who like one of the biggest upsets in battle history lost it the navy yeah because the spanish should have won that it was the Grand Armada. Mm-hmm. Lost. It took that L. It took that L. You're descended from losers. The Portuguese? No. They were also Catholic. Maybe some. Maybe some hopped in. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not Spanish at all. Oh yeah, that's right. Portuguese. <laughs> Portuguese yeah. is not Spanish. We, yeah, they crushed it. Yeah, we. Crushed. Yeah, never mind. All right. Uh, rough sides today for me. Just in general. Yeah. Just down bad. I feel fine. Yeah, we got all the good ones out of the Patreon. That's true. Should have said "Bad Boys Gang" for <laughs> that wouldn't have been relevant. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Just bring it up. So I heard about this prison gang, <laughs> the Bad Boys, oh, the Bad Boys Gang. Um, it was uh, more expensive, however, for uh, to travel back in like the 1790s or whatever. So this first wave of P- Irish New Orleans was middle class or better for the most part. They weren't paying a buck fifty to hop on a cotton boat. They that was like- just like, hey, you're a human weight. Yeah. And if you die, I don't care because you're still on the boat. Yeah, first wave's like, no. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. The second wave, they're just like, alive or dead, I just need you on the boat. Yeah. I don't fucking care. You got a fever, I don't fucking care. Got to weigh us down. Yeah, you got to give up. You're going to give other people a fever. You're going to kill 12 toddlers. I don't fucking care. Just get on the boat. I need the weight. Be cotton. Yeah. Yeah. Be weigh what cotton weighs. Which is an opposite with the uh, Irish in planes where they just chuck them off the plane because you want less weight with a plane. Right. More away with the boat. Needed to fly higher. In fact, we got to the moon by tossing Irishmen off the shuttle mm-hmm. until... Some were like, why didn't we just start with no Irishmen on there? And they're like, well, that's, that's how us. fucking gravity works, yeah. you idiot. You need the Irish there so you can throw them off. Right. It's get up. Momentum. <laughs> yeah. You just keep tossing Irish off. Yeah. Buzz Aldrin was really into it. <laughs> Loved it. The Challenger was just Irishmen. And when Irishmen got caught in the gears... <laughs> yes, all the gears <laughs> on a fucking space shuttle. All those gears in the giant rocket. They didn't throw them off far enough. He got sucked back. Yeah. It just, then. It's like a guy getting caught under a cruise ship. And you know, know why that he didn't get off far enough? They let Sally Ride throw him. <laughs> Think about it. Trying to be inclusive. Yeah. Mm. I'm just Anything saying, you like, can do, she was can probably do a great scientist, but let the man throw him. Yeah. Let the man throw the Irish guy off. You always need one muscle on him. <laughs> fucking space shuttle there's <laughs> only no for throwing the space bouncer <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just tossing mix out of the space shuttle sally's just like can i do one and he's so like a, all right it's fine. like a roadhouse character even the irish guy's like i don't think she's gonna get me far <laughs> enough boil get me out i'm already dead but i i know you got children please don't let her throw me Chet, the space bouncer that stand too hard and cause the challenger. That's just a movie. Yeah, it's, it's like, shut up, Patty. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Let the, let the scientists throw you. 
Uh, Let the skirt do it. <laughs> who cares? So, yeah, so a lot of these people were upper class, and there was an upper class uh, set of Irish uh, citizens as well uh, in New Orleans. For example, uh, Monsell White and Charles Byrne, they were really rich Irish guys in New Orleans. Um, they were big businessmen in the city. Uh, they held major stakes, for example, in um, the New Orleans Canal and Banking Company, which owned and financed the New Basin Canal that killed 8,000 Oh, so they did it to themselves. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. It's always your own team, huh? It really is. Yeah. So the people that financed the canal that killed 8,000 Irish people, were they were like, trust us, we know how worthless we are. You don't. They'll... We've seen us breed, all right? They'll make it up in eight days. <laughs> Shit. It don't matter. The Lord rested on so the seventh day, but none of our uteruses do. So they threw their own bodies. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's they rough. threw their own bodies at the canal. Made a good, made a pretty penny. Listen, we like to work our way up the union ladder. Yeah. When you get to the top of the union, you just get to throw the plebes in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty much. I would say, I would say that's how it goes. Um, so the Irish, yeah, they, you know, they're doing all right. Irish mechanics, uh, for example, were also well organized, uh, and they were, um, you know, um, I don't know what you'd call it, like, you're like trade school, middle class. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like working, a plumber. Working class. Like, work, yeah. like middle class. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Middle class. Like you, you, you've worked. Yeah, like you now. A trade. Yeah, yeah, a, tra a tradesman yeah. lives comfortably to yes, a degree. One hundred percent. Like they're, these are not destitute people. Like these are, they can send their kids to Catholic school. Yeah, probably, special, you know. specialized trade. Yeah, they don't have a liberal arts degree. Right. Yeah. Well, their their grandchildren will, but right. They they these people work real jobs, but us we work. Yeah, they their their descendants are podcasters. They hate us. They should. They're rolling over in their graves. They should. I don't know. I think my descendants are not descendants. My ancestors are probably like, he doesn't do anything at all. Yeah. This is great. Look at him. <laughs> he does things on a screen all day. Doesn't right. break a sweat. Goes home. This guy eats what he wants. <laughs> Just eats whatever. Time of his life. Can go anywhere he wants. It's not kosher, though. So, they don't give a shit. I think considering we're Irish and you're Jewish, everyone's just like, they're alive. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, they did it. <laughs> Still living. He's married to a blonde lady? What? Whoa. Like, yeah, it's crazy. Mine are like, he married his cousin just like us. Yeah. Aw. <laughs> Aw. Take the test. Take the test for to. content. We have to. Yeah. I'll explain why Rory can't, uh, doesn't have any words yet. <laughs> he still can't talk. He does a little bit. He, was, but he, he, he doesn't was, have consistent words. He was uh, saying things at us yeah. yesterday. Yeah. Very intently. It's going to be troubling when he's nine years old and he's still like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Dude, what if he was just speaking like Irish? Like it's Celtic. Gaelic, yeah, yeah, Celtic, Gaelic, whatever. Yeah, probably, he probably, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's just, Celtic is actually just drunk and <laughs> gibberish. It's just, yeah, you're either drunk or you're a toddler. Yeah. That's how you speak Celtic. You take him over to Dublin, he's like just crushing it yeah, with the crowd. Like, oh, I've never seen a boy this young speak that. <laughs> Uh, but Irish mechanics, for example, were a big, uh, big group and really well organized. Um, I don't know if you call it a union necessarily at this point in history, but they were well organized, uh, and they got together to, um, I guess you got really defend their uh, working rights. You know, so what I mean? that's Just a union, yes. Local politics. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like for example, uh, they got together and they like, cause they were kind of thought that they were being um, or could be like edged out and they got together all these Irish mechanics and they're like hey no black guys allowed to do mechanic stuff <laughs> slaves free whatever no blacks got it yeah how they enforce that by beating the shit out of people okay so yeah like early union stuff yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. pre-union union yeah where it's basically like we're collectively bargaining to kick your ass right yeah well yeah right. like they were these trades, they were firefighters. Yeah. Remember, old school firefighters. Started fires. <laughs> Started fires just to fight them. Yeah. Make, and loot make your a house. Buck, you know? yeah. <laughs> That's a bit, I, I will say, of all the things that needed to be taken over by the state or the government, to have profit motive removed, 
Firefighting. Yeah, big, pri- big private, big privateer one. firefighting is not yeah. the move. It's so weird how we can't make that jump to medicine. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fire is sure. Yeah. Oh, God. God forbid if, like, you had to pay out your pocket for that. Like, you know, we just need to have it part of the tax plan. But, you know, yeah. everything else. Yeah. yeah. Look, I have no comment on medicine, but the when firefighters have a profit motive, they More need, shit burns they, down. They need fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. For sure, for sure. Yeah. I'm not saying... Doesn't, no. It doesn't work for the health system at all, though. Like, yeah, they're, they're you know, profit motive for they health. They don't want the cure, man. Yeah, we literally have already rehashed this. Yeah, they don't want the cure, man. <laughs> Listen, patreon.com slash softcore history to understand the rest of that joke. Comes out on Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, But yeah, so I guess they... Yeah, I, I don't really know what they did other than just, like, show up. And be like, all right, so here's the deal, Darky. I got this wrench here, and you got that face there. And Mr. Wrenchy is going to meet Mr. Feisty if uh, you don't stop doing your job. Yeah, basically. I yeah. mean, it's just intimidation. Yeah. yeah fucking assholes. Fucking totally. Pieces of shit. Giant pieces of shit. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, everyone's tribal back then. Everyone's. I'm not excusing Now, are it, they I mean, a product like, of their environment? Or is their environment a product of them? A little bit of A, a little bit of B. I imagine the giant slave state they're in. Right. It might be, yeah. Yeah. And it's also just patent tribalism. Like, it's like, yeah. Yeah. 100%. How it works. Well, and, and to be honest, uh, it's, it's really funny. Like, the people talk about it all the time. Or, like, you, you hear a lot of Southern apologists or Confederate apologists or whatever. Be like, the North was jealous of the South's economy. No, they fucking weren't. The North had a better economy. Like, quite a bit so. Way more industrialized. Yeah. Better it, railroads. Better everything. The economic status of the South could be very put into question if you had to pay everybody. Well, it actually would have been better if they had... Like, slavery is not a free market. No. You know what I mean? Like You have it, to be they, willing. All to the it. slaves cut out. Like, it really inhibited a lot of other people from working. Yeah. And shit like that. And by the way... It was a great concentration of wealth tool, though. Slavery. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 100%. But, like, the South's economy would have been better had slaves not been there. Especially because they had that uh, fucking cash crop. Yeah, for sure. Cotton, tobacco, all that stuff. Yeah. Would have been. They had major cash crops. Yeah. You probably could have, yeah, I mean, you could have actually created a much more free market, like, marketplace without the slavery aspect. Yeah, slavery, there. essentially, it stopped a couple things. It's, it, it kept a lot of white people from being able to work and accumulate wealth in ways that would have helped the economy as a whole. And I think it also, I have to re- go back and read whatever I read, but it essentially disincentivized them from industrializing. Yeah, because why? We're all, all, the planta- all the plantation owners are rich. I'm just yeah. a mint and julep on my porch. Yeah. I got a bunch of guys working for me for free. Oh, I'm I know- just king of. Yeah, and I know they're stick people, but fuck them. They're poor. So why do I care? I have all the money, but like, yeah, you know, you need less fortunate people to spend money too. That's the big thing. Kinda. Yeah, they yeah. kind of they spend the most. It's, you become a billionaire by taking by getting paid money from other people who aren't billionaires. Right. And mass. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, no, so no, Rob, I was told you become a billionaire by buying something that's worth one billion dollars and selling it for two billion dollars. True. True. That's the key. Spot the lie. That's the key. Spot the lie. Yeah. It's an easy way to do it. Just what, flip it, dude. What podcast did you hear that on? Is that Andrew Tateism? <laughs> All of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any one of those guys in that realm? Yeah. <laughs> the reason you're not a billionaire? You start with a paper clip. You trade up, right? Yeah. You just keep trading. I think oh that's Gary V. There was yeah. one fucking tweet I saw. I think it was a tweet. It might have been uh, a blog, but I think it was a tweet. And it was this guy just explaining, like, here's what you do. Don't. He's like, don't buy, like, strawberries or something, or maybe it was a vegetable. It doesn't matter, and eat it, right? I think it was a fruit. So he's like, don't buy the strawberries, whatever. And eat it. Buy the strawberries and plant the seeds, right? So you just paid three dollars for a thing of strawberries, and now you're like a thing of twenty strawberries. But you plant the seeds. Now 
you pay three dollars and you've got five hundred strawberries. Replant all of those, huh. and then replant all of those. And big, big, kept... big flaw there. Land, right? You need land. Right. Also, know how. Oh, you just know how it to. It was just the most like, crypto bro ass fucking tweet. That's the most reductive way of looking at like expansion of what. Hey man, I have a backyard that doesn't have room for five hundred strawberries. Yeah. Yeah, you're not, no. Yeah, no, I just go to uh, my neighbor's private garden. <laughs> also, you need a license to sell food. There's, it's not just like. Don't ask permission, ask forgiveness. Yeah. First rule of being a billionaire. It's Very, fucking classic Jake true. trying to bring government bureaucracy into this shit. Yeah, right. Like taxes. <laughs> get rid of it, dude. What? I don't want to pay him. Taxation is theft. You don't have to. But also, well, make, sure, make sure you pay I do. Taxes. Yeah. But I don't. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's on the free one. Better watch out. Whip. They heard it all. Yeah. Um, the Irish also became an important political group in New Orleans and Louisiana as well. Uh, wooed by and soon after loyal to uh, the Southern Democrats in particular. Uh, in 1844, a uh, local state Democrat, I guess you could call it, um, sent boatloads of Irish immigrants downriver uh, to uh, Plaquemines Parish. Uh, probably butchered that. With instructions, that's what I love, by the way. If you want to hear about voter fraud, don't talk about this electronic shit that's happening now. Just listen to this. Set. The voter fraud is maybe one of the most common things in American history. Yeah. He sent them down. He sent them upriver, downriver, whatever, with the instructions to vote as many times as possible for Democratic presidential candidate James K. Polk. Nice. Yeah. I mean, remember when we did the episode on the Patreon I believe it's that town in Tennessee where they just beat the fuck out of people who would try to vote against them. There's like a whole yeah. firefight around it and shit, too. Yeah. 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 It's crazy. I mean, the whole Kansas uh, Missouri border war, pre Civil War, a lot of that was because Missourians just kept pouring over the border to vote, check the yes on slavery box for the Kansas territory. I mean, I mean, they just showed up like, yeah, I'm from Kansas. Prove it. And they're, <laughs> Like, yeah. there, you, there's you no can't. way to even prove you it. Can't. Yeah. So they just did it, and they're just like, "All right, here's your ballot." I guess I don't know what to say. Voter fraud was so easy back then, dude. <laughs> I mean, Mike Malloy, even like for homeless people of that time, like they just get them fucked up, hit them over the head, dress them up different, make them vote, put them in a but, suit. Yeah. All right, I'll put them in a dress. Insurance fraud, for that matter. Insurance. Mike Malloy. Fraud was just big. Yeah. Fraud's a big part of our. That's business. why homeless people back then all had suits, just in case. Yeah. But you ever see, like, a homeless man from the, the 20s and 30s? Much cleaner than they were now. Oh, yeah. They had pride. They cared. <laughs> Someone needed to dress them up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, after That's what I'm saying. We need to dress the current homeless in suits. It'll be a much better aesthetic. <laughs> Check out Indochino. Dress, <laughs> Indochino.com slash softcore? Dress to impress. Yeah. Maybe. Or is it Indochino.com? Promo code softcore. Who cares? It's, one it's, of not, that, it's not today. One it's of those two. Um, in 1860, <clears throat> after that presidential election that Lincoln won, I actually think Lincoln wasn't even on the ballot in Louise. They kept him off the ballot in several states. I don't remember which states it was. Mm. Um, South Carolina was one for sure. I don't remember the other ones. I think Louisiana might have been one. Um, either way, Lincoln won. However, uh, the Irish, um, they firmly supported they firmly supported the South's desire to secede uh, because they were essentially afraid that free black people would threaten their employment and general position in society. Uh, New Orleans Irish community actually provided the largest number of recruits to the Confederate military in that state. Hmm. Another proud one. However, um, the Irish, being unskilled as they often were, uh, were mostly used as cannon fodder. Of course. In the Confederate Army. Hey, bro, check out this drum. Try it out. Yep. You don't get a gun. Sorry. Yeah. No, they launch them in the cannons. Like, you're all drummers. Oh, you're yeah. very musical people. Yeah. Do one of those sea shanties. Play the fifes. Yeah. Yeah. Just all of you walk towards them and sing some song, like, you know. You know, She like, was on the cliffs of in a Sharon. And then, you know. You, you do one of these. These are. Like, do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever. It's an easy song to play. Yeah. Um, we could also maybe. Thank the Irish. Now, this would be a whole up. I'm not going to, I'm not only going to dip a toe on this. I'm, I'm almost done. I, I yeah, wanna stop sucking this off. I want to mention it, but this could be a whole up, ep- could and should be a whole episode on its own. Um, 
I'm not going to dive like deeply into this now because again, I could do a whole other hour on this at least. But the Irish are at least partially responsible for the largest single lynching in American history. Is it Emmett Till? No. no. Oh. That was maybe the most famous, but uh, I'm talking... That's one person. We're talking oh. volume. Oh. We're okay. talking Numbers. Dago Hill. Oh, okay, gotcha. We're talking the Italians, the nine Italians who were killed in New Orleans in uh, 1890. So there were two Italian mob families in New Orleans. Um, the police chief in New Orleans at the time uh, was Irish. Uh, I'm trying to think of his name. Uh, police chief David Hennessy. Classic. He was assassinated by a group of gunmen. Probably Italian. Yeah. To be quite honest, he probably was murdered by the Italian mob, if we're being totally honest. Um, so you're saying they asked for it? Uh, well, I'm saying that some of the people that did it were definitely Italian, and they. I don't even. I like. I, I didn't even look into this enough to. Uh, to, to say who got killed and who didn't, I think some of the murderers might have, but a bunch of innocent people did too. That's not, it's really beside the point. That's a f- time for a whole other episode, like this thing for a whole other episode. Um, but they killed an Irish guy, and there was hatred of the Italians was running high. The Irish had already secured their place in society, so they were kind of like, fuck these new people. Right. Whose nickname across America and in the South, especially, I assume, was uh, White N Words. Yeah. Was what we called Italians, or sp- the more playful spaghetti n words. And everyone knows when you take out one Irishman, we got to get you back for eleven. Uh, I think it was nine. I thought it was eleven. Either way, um, whatever. So they killed him, and allegedly, uh, Hennessy whispered to Captain William O'Connor, also Irish. Yeah, of course. Of course the entire police force was fucking Irish. Classic. It's really smart of us to just take that job. Yeah, that was a quick one. It's like, oh, wait, like, they get to beat people up? Right. Well, yeah. it's like, well, we're not in charge but we have of the government, but we do have, like, we're the one, we're the mo- we're the henchmen. Like, we're the, yeah, we're the ones level, that get to do the violence. Local crime syndicates. Goon jobs. That's what we are. They're just goons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, they were like, who did it? Who did it? And uh, Hennessy reportedly on his uh, hospital bed um, or somewhere, anyway, he was wounded, whispered to Captain William O'Connor, Daggles. So that was enough to start it. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, it was the Italians. They started the fire. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's just so funny. It's just like, tell me real quick before you die. Dang, oh, Stan. Imagine uh, you're, you're, you're yeah. Your dying last word is a slur. <laughs> <laughs> like, God. That's how you go out. Uh, that That is disputed, however. It's a, it might be an apocryphal uh, uh, situation. And the reason they were lynched. No, I'm going to take that. As we, I, do, I have to, to be honest. But the reason they were lynched is, is essentially uh, most of them got off. They were either acquitted or had a mistrial. Those sick fucks. They got off? They got off, do it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Hennessy was killed, and uh, the Irish in particular were upset. Obviously, he was Irish. He told his Irish buddy that Italians killed him, so on and so forth. Uh, so the Irish of New Orleans had a fun little hand in that as well. But to this day, they are a big part of the city. They have their own cathedral. Let me look it up real quick uh, in New Orleans. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. They came, a lot of them came over. I just didn't realize they had so much presence in New Orleans. Yeah, uh, St. Patrick's Church is, of course, uh, is a really, is like the second, I think, biggest or most, like, noted um, church in right. in New Orleans. We after. chased out the snakes of Louisiana. Well, I got to feel like it's still full of snakes, to be quite honest. It's pretty swampy. We chased them out. All right. Fair enough. Uh, But that is all I got for today about the Irish and the history you didn't know of them in New Orleans. Uh, So, Jake, you doing your Irish History Month episode next week? No. (laughs) No, I'm not. 
it's too too many episodes I'm in the have Irish. To skip you. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Don't make me not do work. <laughs> you know, right? Yeah. What oh no. Threat. Yeah, no, you we'll want to skip? We'll make you do the episode and then just be like, nah, not enough Irish. Yeah. yeah. Just we'll do it do again. Do it again. <laughs> do it again. Again. Not quite my tempo. Actually, same episode, but just replace everything with Irish. Yeah. It's like an episode on the Babylonians. Like, uh, then the Irish. Um, the Irish sacked Carthage. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's weird. Well, that happened. Yeah. No, I learned a lot today, though. I learned that uh, everybody's willing to throw their own people at the tunnel if it has to be built. Oh, my no, God. So, yeah. It's it's a shame that that's how it went down. But it's also, I didn't know that there were... It, I'm confirming that New Orleans is the most haunted place in the U.S. because there's 8,000 dead Irishmen in a fucking canal. <laughs> and that's only Well, part. under a road now. Yeah, under a road. Probably that stretch of the bayou fucking straight or whatever where everyone's dead. Yeah. I, yeah, but God, probably a lot of accidents there. People are driving at night. Right. Some tattered up redheaded guys just in the road. <laughs> ah! <laughs> just fucking jumps like, out. Oh! Yeah, you swerve off the road, and you just get all of a sudden you're dead. You get yeah. created by eight. I don't know why. I, s- I don't know what happened. Next thing you know, a potato went through my windshield, or so I thought. <laughs> potato chunks out through a potato. At me. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Yeah, I learned that though. I learned about the fucking canal. I didn't realize there's so much death around it, but I should have known. There's, well, how could there not be? Really? Yeah. No, right. Right. Uh, Dan, what'd you learn today? I learned that uh, we have a presence in New Orleans because I don't, I don't remember. Every yeah. time I go to New Orleans, I never see anything Irish. There is a whole part of New Orleans called the Irish Channel. I don't go. Have you heard of it? No, I haven't. Really? Mm. That's where they lived. The two assumptions on why it's called that that I read, it could be another story to it, um, were one that it's where the Irish channeled into, mm, okay. you know? And the other was that... Um, <laughs> they just got a shitty neighborhood where all the water fucking flooded into whenever it rained. So Irish just meant bad too, or no? That's where they lived, and it channeled the water. Yep. And okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I it was so they like just lived channel. in the flood yeah. When plate. the levees broke, it hit the Irish hard. Yeah. yeah, no one talks about the Irish when the levees broke. People just standing up on the dry ground, like, why don't you drink your way out of it? <laughs> oh, burn. Like everything else. Oh, it's the one you don't want to drink. Water. Imagine George that. Bush doesn't care about Irish people. Yep. Michael Myers said that after Kanye. No one remembers, though. Right. He was yeah. like, I can, have it. You know, I can just I, add let me, one. Let me get As one. a redhead. Can I yes here. and this? Yeah. Because, yeah. Um, Who's today's Hitler? <laughs> your boys at the fucking... <laughs> Canal and Bank. Uh, the Irish people, yeah, actually. The Irish. Our own. It's the yeah. two Irish dudes. The Canal Bank and the people that lynched all the Italian people. Well, so a lot of... That was not Irish only. Oh, that was a... A league Everyone of got a league of fun. races. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Everyone got in on that fun. That was a not me today. But obviously, <laughs> the Irish community was quite worked up over it. They spearheaded it. But yeah. I mean, you know, plenty of others were like, "Yeah, fuck Italians." Yeah, I gotta go with the the guys who the bank guys. The yeah, bank guys. yeah, them easily. Oh yeah, throw bodies. Yeah, throw we got them. At it. It's all good. Uh, but that is all I have got for today. Again, patreon.com slash softcore history for um, two extra episodes a week. Um, we do just another regular episode like this. And then we either do. Yep, uh, we already explained this. Watch along or a voicemail. And then, uh, yeah, please, please, please leave a five star review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And if you're on Apple Podcasts, also write a review. Helps us immensely. Please and thank you. Yeah, that's all. That is all I've got. Uh, For Jake Goldman and Dan Jester, I'm Rob Fox. You just got saucer.